Hi Year 9, welcome back to Science at British Online School. Today we're moving on to Topic 2 in Year 9 Science, which is looking at energy changes, stores and transfers. We'll be starting it off today with looking at a form of stored energy known as gravitational potential energy. For today's starter task, I'd like you to watch this video which shows the impact of gravity on a falling body by looking at skydivers. While you're watching this, you should be thinking and ready to share. What do we already know and what do we mean by the term gravity? What forces are acting on the skydiver? Relating that back to our earlier years when we studied forces, thinking about the forces up, the forces down, and how the energy is converting. See if you can sketch a diagram showing these forces. And then just for a bit of extra challenge, if you have time, see if you can include the direction and magnitude of the forces labelled clearly on your diagram with an arrow to show the direction and give a number for your anticipated magnitude or a relative size of the arrow. Thanks for sharing your ideas there. So let's just summarise. Immediately on leaving the aircraft, the skydiver accelerates downwards due to the force of gravity. Remember, that's because of their mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength on Earth. At that point, when they've just jumped out the plane, there's no air resistance acting in the upwards direction. And that means we have a resultant force acting downwards. Remember that term, resultant force. It's the difference between the force acting in one direction and the opposing force acting in the opposite direction. During this time, while the downward force is greater than the upward force, the skydiver is accelerating. That will continue until the force of air resistance pushing up the way is equal to the force down the way from the acceleration due to gravity. At that point, the skydiver will reach a constant speed. This velocity is often referred to as the terminal velocity, the final velocity reached when the forces are balanced. And that will stay the same unless something else changes. So the next thing that happens is that something does change. The parachute is opened by the skydiver. When that happens and the parachute opens, it immediately vastly increases the size of the air resistance. And this force is much greater than the downward force due to gravitational field strength and pulling down on the person. That results in a deceleration. It, the skydiver slows down rapidly until they reach a new slower terminal velocity, which allows them to then glide safely down at that new terminal velocity down to land on Earth safely. So the learning objectives for today's lesson are to reflect on our prior knowledge of types of energy, and then also to know examples of how energy stored as gravitational potential energy can be transferred to other energy stores. There are many forms of energy stores, a lot of which we've met in the previous years in Key Stage 3 Science. Um, just to go through them again and remind you, we've looked at kinetic energy, that's movement energy before. We've seen that there's chemical stored energy um, stored in chemicals, for example, food or the chemicals we use to do science experiments. And that's a stored form of energy that can be changed into others. Elastic potential energy we're going to cover in a later lesson. Today, we're looking at gravitational potential energy. We've also previously met electrical energy and understanding how the flow of electrons within a conductive substance um, is a form of energy that can be useful and can be changed into many other forms of useful energy for us. And we'll look later on as well at magnetic energy. In today's task, we're going to explore how gravitational potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy and other forms of energy. We're going to explore that by creating, designing and making our own parachutes. So I want you to imagine that you're jumping out of a plane 10,000 feet up in the air. Think about what type of material you'd want your parachute to be made of. How big would you want it to be? The design of your parachute is extremely important because it is an extreme sport skydiving. Your life is dependent on the design and the parachute functioning correctly at all times. Engineers thoroughly test the materials and designs of parachutes to make sure that they do open as they should and they reliably do that every single time and also that they're strong enough to withstand the air resistance in order to slow down that terminal velocity down to a slow enough safe landing speed. So today's a day when you're going to get to do some practical science at home, designing and testing your own parachute. Most of the items needed here can be found in the home or substituted with alternatives that you can find at home, whatever you've got. Um, we can use different types of paper or material to make up the, the parachute 
fabric itself. Suggestions are napkins, tissue paper, construction paper or newspaper or paper towels. However, if you have alternatives, any flexible material that's quite lightweight could be used for this. String is needed, but if you don't have string, you could substitute that for wool or something else that's long and thin and flexible. Tape, like sellotape or electrical tape, any sort of tape you have around the house. The weights are to represent the skydiver. Coins are quite a good suggestion because they're small and quite heavy, but you can substitute that with anything you have around the house. It could be um, things from the toolbox like washers. It can be small toys work really well also for this. Um, you could use a measuring tape when you're trying to measure the drop height. If you don't have a measuring tape, you could also use a ruler um, or any other measuring device that you have available at home. You might have a meter stick if you're lucky. Um, it would be great if you've got a ruler to measure the circle radius, but I think most of us have one of those in our pencil case. Shouldn't be too tricky. And you'll need a stopwatch and it is fine. You can use the stop clock on your phone or you can use a stopwatch on your watch or anything really on your computer as well. So the first part of today's task is to go into your breakout rooms in your usual science lab groups. OK, you're going to work there and do some research and brainstorm and get some ideas together about what features your ideal best parachute would have. I've added some links into the lesson PowerPoint, which you can access there for yourselves and working together in a group and share your ideas. And what you should be doing is brainstorming these characteristics with your group, make some notes and also sketch your design before construction begins. I'll just show you where that's going to be on this week's worksheet. Part one of today's task should be completed on your worksheet ready to submit at the end of the lesson. Um, it's just a space for your notes and your sketches of your design. You could even sketch those on paper and just upload a photo into the worksheet as well so that I can have a look at that and share your ideas and discuss. Now that you've come up with your design, it's time to construct your parachute. Now, members of the group are going to have to work on this independently, but they can use ideas that have been shared between the group and go with their favourite suggestions. You should cut a shape from the chosen paper. Um, it can help to make a hole in the centre of the shape. I'll show you some pictures in a moment. To cut lengths of equal string, a suggestion is six. You can do more, but I wouldn't do fewer. Um, and tape them at equal distances around the edge of the shape. And then you want to tape the other ends of the string to whichever weight you've chosen to represent your skydiver. When you've done that, you're then going to test the parachute. You can do this outside or inside if you have enough height. Maybe you've got a small step ladder to allow you to drop it from a height and see if it flies slowly and lands gently. You want to make a record of your observations. You can do that by recording actual data. Maybe suggestions could be the length of the flight, um, the distance that it travels horizontally, as well as the height that you're dropping it from vertically. As time permits, it would be great to try and use our knowledge now in year nine of the scientific method, changing different variables. So you want to decide what your independent variable is in each set of experiments, and you may wish to adapt that and change that. Always recording and being clear about your dependent variable as well. That should all be recorded in section two of your worksheet. On the lesson PowerPoint, you'll see some suggestions of previous homemade parachutes that someone's done before with some links to have a look as well. These are just suggestions. You can create your very own design. For those of you needing a bit of extra challenge with this practical, there's some extra suggestions on the PowerPoint. Some of them are about changing parachute size. So you could test circles or alternative shapes with different size of radius to find what one works best. You may want to try parachutes with and without holes in the top, and that can affect the way that the parachute flies and the distance it travels. You might want to vary the mass, um, so to compare how well it works for different weights of skydivers. And you might want to try, if you have available to you at home, what the effect of changing the material is. But remember, in each of these cases, if we want to make this a fair test, you need to keep all the other control variables the same. So if you are changing the type of material, you'll need to make sure that the size, the radius, um, the mass, the drop height, everything else are kept the same. So be really clear when you're putting together your notes and recording your results that you're very clear about your independent variable, your dependent variable and your control variables. I'm really looking forward to looking over your results from this and seeing some of the photos and videos and the data that you get to find out if we've been able to produce the best parachute. For those of you who do finish and want a little bit of a 
extra task for the end of the lesson, I have added in this TED Ed lesson all about gravity, how we can think about and understand gravity.